we visit Dakota Wichoha in Morton, where we learn how the Dakota way of life is remembered, reclaimed, and reconnected. For me, I always say, you know, I'm Dakota, and so it's a part of me, and without the language, I'm not whole. I can't be myself and be completely self-determined until I figure out who I am. And I think the, the whole power within it and the language is sacred. And so it's really something that you don't take lightly when you start learning. My name is Glenn Washichina. And here at Dakota Wichoka, I teach the Dakota language. It's uh, not so much me teaching them that we come here to learn the language because uh, they feel that a part of them is missing. There's a, a ton of policies that were meant to eradicate uh, the Dakota people in general and they and they're, they used uh, a number of efforts but one of them was boarding schools that, that really had a significant uh, impact on why there are few speakers today and so um, my grandma and my grandpa and many others of that generation went to boarding school and were discouraged from using the language. In some of those cases, it was uh, a negative experience. And so out of protecting uh, their children and their grandchildren, that language was not passed down. It's up to us as the Dakota people to start speaking the language. So the, the language has been there all the time. It's just a matter of uh, us coming to, to the language. Anybody can learn it. There's people at the University of Minnesota who aren't Dakota and they're learning it and they want to become teachers, which I think is beautiful. I have some um, of my classmates come down and help me uh, teach because I'm a teacher apprentice, they're the same level, so then I have more people in the room to help teach and there's more language being conversed. Hey, Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. So Glenn's our teacher and he told us to come with a story so we all um, came up with a story that's personal so it comes from our hearts so then we'll remember it more. Fort Ridgely, Hechia Osdoha Unkichumpi. He o iokpi. Marshmallows e mihidui. And I feel like um, the storytelling in that aspect of learning and how it's personal and relevant to you, that's how you remember it. So we're all learning to kind of reclaim what our stories are and practicing doing that. Hey hon, San Francisco Otunwe Gakia I Echia Chue Tawak Chi Ti Ampetua Omani I Echikopte Gahape Echikopte license plate, Minnesota Wapi. Ha ha! Ea. Echikopte Inaji. We chashta hecha. We chashta he yashicha hecha. Inamitawa. Minnesota hemataha. Ea. Oha, mija. Minnesota hemataha. Ea. So basically, I, I told you a story about my parents, how they met. They were in California, but they were both from here, and then just happened to meet. He went by in his car, and it had a Minnesota license plate. So it's kind of a funny story. We don't have, like, textbooks or anything. It's our oral history. It was always passed down, and so that's why it's important that we always say, you know, just teach a sentence, teach a word, teach anything to anybody the language because that's ensuring and that's securing that that's going to be passed down and that's going to keep going. What's in the language that makes it important to an identity, you know, it, and I can only talk about my personal identity with it is that it's what I grew up with. My grandma was a first speaker so she, I heard her speaking, my aunts and uncle were speakers. Um, it just brings that sense of identity back to you of who, who you are and where you came from. The other aspects of the culture that we try and bring here, um, in the Shutanka program we have the um, horse lessons. You know, we use the horse to teach the kids leadership and um, also their sense of belonging there as well. 
Uh, so we have a lot of different programs that bring in that leadership aspect and that identity. I'm a Wakoshka and what we do is I was when I was a Wachina, which is a young girl, I was taught by another Wakoshka and I was taught like the language and some of the culture. The main thing I like to do in this program is teaching the young girls the leadership skills and the language and the culture because I know that it's being passed down to a younger generation that can keep it going. So we Koshka is young women, Koshka is young men. So the beginning of the programs, there's a lot of grants and a lot of funding for making um, girls become young leaders, but there wasn't a lot for men, uh, for boys to have programming. So we found some money, and so that one's just prospering too with the Wichiana, and they're, they're working with Ryan, and they're doing awesome things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, songs for almost a year now and they've gotten a lot uh, very far and the community is really respectful to them because they go to powwows and they go to different things and they they do the honor songs so they're doing the same things just for men and for boys what we do in the evening time when we gather with our families is we provide a meal we have a meal, you always have to have a meal. <laughs> you know, food brings everybody in. And so we provide a meal and we say a prayer. We have our meal prayer in Dakota or even in English sometimes. And then um, our DTAs, we have four DTAs that teach a language lesson. Um, the thing about this word is it's a whole sentence. Damakota. I am Dakota. And after the language lesson, we all circle up again and we sing the thank you song. And then um, we let the families know what the next activities are and just give them updates and welcome back for the next following week. Remember, reclaim, and yeah, reconnect. Yeah. yeah, those are the three areas that we work on. And the, um, the remembering part is a part of our video, our documentary and our reconnect are all of our programs that we have with our um, youth and families. And then our reconnect piece is with um, our newsletter, our Facebook page, and just to go out and connect with the families and the language and culture. <laughs> Being Dakota means a lot of things, like uh, it's not so much learning how to drum or how to sing, it's all, it's all part of a bigger picture. There's a lot of things that uh, come into play when, when these, come, these uh, young people come here. We try to instill a pride of being Dakota, and I think that's the most important part. One time during an interview for a grant, one of the guys asked if why we do the program and why we do the Dakota 38 Memorial Ride is if we're trying to shame other races and I think that kind of offended me a little because we don't do things here to shame other people or to make other people feel bad about the past. What we do here is more to move on from the past and to continue growing. So I guess the one thing I'd want someone to know is that we don't do this because it's what we're told we have to do. We do this because it's important to us and because we want to remember things and learn from them, not to make other people feel bad for it. <laughs>